On September 1st, 1939, Adolf Hitler launches his invasion of Poland, and World War II begins. Germany's style of war, also known as lightning war, is to attack with a large force and simply to strike over and over again to wear down the enemy. German panzers and BF 109s completely devastated the Polish landscape. Poland was overwhelmed in days. Germany's fame did not last for long. Eventually, into the latter parts of the war, Hitler had to be pushed back into Berlin. Hitler demanded that more planes that were faster and more powerful to be able to counter the a Allies' threat. Some of these powerful and fast planes were already in use, like the ME-262 jet fighter. But the ME-262's jet engine was hard to maintain and required extremely high maintenance in order for top performance. If you wanted a plane that was easy to produce and could easily counter the American B-29s that were too high for the ME-262's jet engines to operate functionally, the answer was the HE-162 Volksjager Salamander. Volksjager standing for People's Fighter in German. There were a few distinct features about the Volksjager that distinguished it from other planes. For example, the engine on top of it gave it its distinct famous hunchback shape. The plane also used a nose wheel rather than the usual tail wheel configuration. Because Germany was low on supplies during the end of the war, they were forced to use wood and glue in the construction of the plane. However, the glue was of quite low quality, and the wings would rip off if the plane entered high speeds. They solved these problems later, however, and the plane flew even faster than the ME-262 jet. The HE-162 was only able to shoot down one plane, however. World War II ended two months later after it first drew blood. Heinkel tried two models with the HE-162, one with forward swept wings, and one with back swept wings. For Heinkel, the reality of being able to make a fighter in less than 90 days was simply a dream. William Messerschmitt himself, the famous creator of the BF-109 series, said that it was impossible to make such an aircraft in less than 90 days. But the Fuhrer had other plans. Kurt Tank, the famous designer of the FW-190 and the TA-152, approached the batter's plate to take a shot at the new fighter. The Kurt Tank TA-183 was probably the most successful out of all the fighters, if it ever managed to fly. The TA-183 was fast, very fast. It could catch P-17s in a heartbeat. It could climb into their altitude fast enough to be able to encounter them. It was armed with four Mark 108 cannons, and four X-4 wire-guided rockets. Perhaps with powerful X-4 rockets, they could have countered the B-17s in time to stop the bombing. However, it simply came too slow, too late and Russian tanks destroyed the factories before they ever made it into production. Only three prototypes survived. No one knows what happened to them to this day. Rumor has it that the Russians used the design from the TA-183 to make their famous MiG-15 fighters. You could even say the tail design adapts from the F-86 Sabre.